Hey, welcome to Adventures with Peps today. We are painting Slothrot. I asked on the community post what I should paint first, and it was a draw. So I asked again, and it was a draw. So I ended up flipping a coin. So let's get into it. Pallid Bone is going to be the first bit. I'm going to use that for his skin. So for those who aren't Slain fans, Slothrot is a character from Slain. And after becoming a Dream Lord, which is basically a shaman, he started to shed his skin. Ugh. He then became more and more powerful and his lust for strength and controlling humans grew with that. He learned everything he knew about the dark arts from Lord Weird Sloth Feg. Jeez, these names are hard. Who I'm hopefully going to be painting up at some point, and he is terrifying. But ultimately, he's the main villain, and uh, Lord Feg was trying to bring about Ragnarok and when this druid learnt about it he decided to copy down the plans and escape on a flying longship and meet up with the druids down at Glastonbury in the hopes that they would face him down and defeat him. Along the way he meets Slane and they have some uh, a couple of cool adventures with each other where Slane ultimately joins forces and Together they fight off a load of skull swords and other flying longboats. If you've not read the comics of Slain, especially the early adventures, I highly recommend it. I'll drop some links in the uh, comments below. But yeah, I was trying to work out what I should paint. It was between this guy and a judge. The judge will probably be the next video up. I, I needed a break, I think from sci-fi. I've been painting a lot of sci-fi recently. I think uh, a chance to do some fantasy was good for me. I'm also planning on maybe building a warband around these guys to use in uh, Frostgrave or Archipelago, Ghost Archipelago, just so that I can start playing some different game systems. But at the same time, I do need to start playing some Slain and getting some battle reports up. So maybe I should just concentrate on one system at a time and see what we can do. Now as far as skin goes on this guy, it is pretty much his little ankles and his arms. So this is a, a pretty quick stage. And there we go, it's pretty much done, just gotta pick out some fingers. We will then start moving on to, I guess, what is his main feature. The beard and the cloak. These guys, it looks like facial hair, I'm calling it a beard. But I'm not entirely sure if it is a long beard or if it's straw. I know his uh, Droon Warriors wear masks of straw. Though that also looks like a beard. The idea is it's meant to hide the smell of their decaying bodies. Which just is disgusting. <laughs> it's very slang. Right, with flesh now done. Gonna move on to his green cloak, which we use an absolution green. This would make for a great dark angel green. Or foresty green, so I might try and use it on some wood elves I've got. And we're going to use it to cover the lower third of his cloak. Just load up the brush. This is a very uh, textiled model. Textile? That's the wrong word. Textured model. There's so much detail that these speed paints just are going to catch every part of it, as you can already see. Adding some great depth. I'm probably going to give this a, a dry brush towards the end. But yeah, the speed paints are just going to do 90 to 100% of the work. And with these last little bits, pretty much done with that cloak. He's so green. I know it's because there's no other color on the model yet. That is a bright green. Didn't expect it to be that bright. I think it's because it's on the white base coat. It's really popping. Now we move on to Sand Golem, which is going to be for his 
straw slash facial beard thingamajig. Who knows what it is? The comics even disagree now and again. Sometimes it says hair, sometimes it says straw. Pretty sure it's straw. But I don't know. It could just be a beard. <laughs> if you've got any opinion on it, drop me a comment. But yeah, I'm just enjoying this model. It's super simple to paint. As you can see, I'm just load up the brush and drag it down the model helping the uh, helping the paint flow into the deep crevices crevices the paint's going to do all the work on this model and I'm happy with that work smart not hard people life's too short It's at this point that I realised I'd also covered up one of his medallions that he's wearing around him with the rune on it. Uh, I'll fix that later, but I made sure that I, it was fully covered, that it dried consistently, and when I come back to paint over it, it will have the same colour across the whole piece. We now move on to the Grave Lord Grey, which I'm just going to use on his feet, pick out his shoes. I'm not going to do anything too fancy here. Very quick step. Just wanted it to look a bit different to the rest of the model. And I'm also going to use this, like I said, to go over those medallions. Just carefully pick them out, making sure not to hit the beard. The paint is still wet, which uh, could cause issues. But luckily for me, it didn't. Um, and also, having that orange underneath gave the stony grey a little bit more interesting colour. I do go back later and do a bit more on it, just to even out the colour. It works. I'm pretty happy. It's all going to plan so far. Now we're going to use the Grave Lord Grey and just do the handle on his knife. I'm not sure if there's a gem on the top of this or if it's just some texture they were trying to give it. I just assumed it was texture. I'm just picking out the hilt, making sure that I'm not getting it on his hand at all. There we go. This paint, I do not know how to use properly. Maligant Green. I think in the examples in the paint guides that come with these paints, you use it to paint up a certain plague god's demon. I'm just gonna try and use it as the paper in his book, and also for the stitching on his leather gown. But ultimately, I end up hating how it looks. So even though I've done this, you're gonna watch me paint over it later. It's very light. It's... Ugh, I don't know. Maybe I need to buy some Plague Demons and use it on that. It didn't give the effect that I was hoping for. I thought it might have been like a sickly green skin. But it's not. It's this weird luminescent green that I'm sure works well on demons. But this guy, no thank you. Having realised the error of that, I grab the runic grey. We're just going to use that on his knife. As I've said in previous videos, I'm not a fan of metallic paint. I prefer using this runic grey to give the effect of metal. A bit more comic book esque, I guess. But I really like the effect. I like how it captures the shadow, gives it some highlight on the etching. Just sits nicely and I really enjoy using it in this way. That's an extremely quick uh, step. This is what I like about this model. It's so quick with speed paint. So we're over halfway through. I'm now grabbing the dark wood. And I'm going to use this for the rest of his cloak and his headdress. This is 
gonna make it pop in my mind, make him look very woodland, very he's robbing from nature to dress himself. I wanted to make sure this section was dark because we're gonna use the hardened leather on his gown. So I wanted to make sure this brown popped against that and it also shows off his beard really well. On a textured surface like this one, this brown just looks so great. It's really fun to paint on. You just gotta take your time, make sure you don't miss anything. Otherwise the white paint is really gonna stand out. It's just so fun. As you can see, I'm just trying to pick out the edges to begin with and then I fill in a section. This for me is total relaxation. I can zone out. I think whilst I was painting this, I was also watching some YouTube videos, seeing what everyone else was getting up to. I just got to relax and completely chill out from the stress of the hospitality industry during Christmas period. It's just wonderful to have this ability. Like that, the brown is now done. Look at that, the beard is popping. Like, <laughs> these colours are intense. More so than I was expecting. Uh, I definitely have decided at this point that I needed to dry brush the model to bring it all together. We're pretty much getting towards the end now, so we've got the hardened leather. This is going to be used for his gown. This is such a weird colour. I'm not sure if it was reacting weirdly with my primer. But it wasn't going on smoothly. Uh, ultimately it worked out in the end. It strangely gave his gown some texture. It looks really blotchy. Maybe I didn't shake it enough. I can guarantee it's a me problem, not a paint problem. Even my cheap primer, or I just didn't shake it enough. But look, you're getting the idea. Now we're just going to let this dry for a bit. Need to work out how I'm going to do the book and his horns. We'll be right back. Right, makes sense to use the leather. I know I'm dry brushing so I can lighten up these horns in a little bit. I'm just gonna carefully pick out these horns. I'm starting to think maybe I should have done that before the flesh. These horns are wrapped around everything, they're even in the weapon. I gotta make sure I get all the white gone. So bloody fiddly, but we're there. Also decided this was probably the colour to pick the book out with. So once I catch a few more dots of white that I've spotted, I'm gonna hit up the book. I was trying to be neat and tidy because I was gonna try and keep that Malagan green page color. But as I'm doing it, I'm realizing that green does not work. I also flooded the top of the book. I gave up on the idea. Decided to cover, <laughs> cover over it with the brown. Fix it up later with something else. And with that stage complete, we got all the base colors down. He is looking rather intense, more intense than I thought he was going to be. Uh, this definitely helped sell the idea of giving him a dry brush. I needed to make him look a bit dirtier. I needed to bring these colours down. They're just looking too intense. Which there's nothing wrong with that. But because I didn't do my usual black, grey, white undercoat, he's looking a lot brighter than I thought he was going to. I decided to grab the base colour Rachef Flesh, if that's how it's pronounced. Kind of a 
dusty flesh color and I'm just going to gently start using that all over the model help bring down the intensity of the colors just load up the brush swipe down from the top try and give it some consistency catch every section I'm going a bit harder on the horns I want them to look lighter I'm gonna continue brushing down and then shockingly I mess up with the dry brushing as you will see very shortly I get too aggressive and his weak ankles give out oh. Luckily, some super glue and <laughs> modeling material on the base later pretty much repaired the model. We'll be able to hide this up when we get the base done. But I'm ultimately there. Uh, I pretty much have had enough after fixing his ankles. So I finished it in the morning. And I will show you the finished results right now. As always, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned something from my mistakes. I hope uh, you hit like, subscribe, and come back for the next video. Cheers for watching.